most of you know that um, that Laura and Carrie and I have had a very long-standing relationship. Um, Laura and I are both celebrating 37 years in business, and 37 of those years we've worked together. So this is the first time that we've done a Zoom to our entire mailing list, and I am so glad that you're all joining us. I know some of you may not be familiar with PRISM, and that was that was part of the uh, the thought process today. Is that we I so want you to to be experienced to to have the experience of seeing Laura and her yarns and her designs. They are amazing, and to know why it's meant so much to both of us to collaborate. Um, I will. I mean, Carrie is going to be here. She's going to be monitoring the chat. Earlier today, um, we we did say in the chat. I'm going to just kind of walk you through. If you want, you can go on to my website, which is www.greatyarns.com. On the home page, you will see a listing at the top, and it will say presentations. If you click on that presentations, and just you'll get a drop down window for November 2021, and you will see the itinerary of today's presentation. If you click on any individual model there, it will bring up all the color options. Further, if you want to go on that top bar and you go to kits, and then you drop that down yeah. to the alphabetical listing and you'll go to PRISM, you will see four entire pages of PRISM kits that are all there. So you can find your own colors, you can find your own designs, but you can spend time just perusing through the extensive list of kits. So having said that, we are recording this. So it, um, hopefully it will be available to you if you want to uh, take a look at it later on. And for those that weren't able to join us, it will be available as well. I want to introduce my cohort in crime here. This is Carrie Adams. Hi. Um, she and I have collaborated together for years. You've seen us at Stitches shows and so forth. She is an independent sales rep and she is the rep for PRISM. So again, the three of us have all collaborated for many, many years. And so um, be sure and send her notes on the chat. And again, we just want to ask all of you to please check your mute button. Yeah. For whatever reason, I'm and Laura, I have to apologize. I'm having trouble muting people who are coming in and you're hearing that noise and it's going to you, Laura. So I know I've muted you twice. <laughs> so, um, All right. you know, so please mute and we'll come to a point where we'll ask if there are any questions. Um, yes. Okay. So, all right. So I'm from here going to turn it to Laura and the prison presentation. Thank you, Laura. Thanks. Thanks, Fontel and Carrie. And it, I can't um, help but um, but second that um, that understanding of our very long relationship. Carrie was the very first sales rep that I ever had, and really, she's now the very last sales rep that I have. Um, a lot of you know that I'm sort of in a semi-retired state at this point. I'm no longer advertising. I'm not traveling to shows. Um, I am doing this kind of thing for only very select customers. Um, and a number one is Great Yarns in Everett, Washington. Um, so we have known each other for a really long time. And, and it was very funny. Carrie pursued me for probably two years before I finally said, okay, okay, I'll let you rep me. And it was one of the best things I ever did. She, she um, was tremendously helpful in growing PRISM. And um, if I, if I didn't, you know, as long as I didn't have to do it all myself, it allowed me to grow. I mean, there was, there were, there was, um, there was a, what she brought to the table allowed me to do what I needed to do. So it's been a very good thing. And then Fontel has been one of my longest standing customers. And um, that's why she's the main, one of the main ones still standing because um I'm about as busy as I want to be, and I want you all to know that um, things that you order tonight, I may or may not have them in stock, but I am standing by to dye yarn for the next two weeks. So it might be three weeks before you get your orders, but I do want you to know that we are down here at PRISM to only me and my husband, Matt. And he kind of runs the book end of it and I do everything else. So 
whatever you get will have been dyed by me, washed by me, labeled and twisted by me, wound by me, <laughs> packaged by me, the whole shebang. Um, and so I appreciate your patience in knowing that really what you're getting are bespoke products. They are, they are things that are made with love by me for you. So, um, so I thank you for that. And we're going to plunge right in here with um, Mia too. Now, Fontal, we were just talking about the jacket she's wearing is Merino Mia, which was for many, many years, our workhouse, workhorse sock weight yarn. And um, when Matt and I were looking at being semi-retired, the amount of yarn that we would have had to buy um, at a very um, elevated price, this was probably two years ago, um, would have kept me for another 10 years. And I, I don't know how long I'm going to do this, but I didn't want to commit to 10 more years. So it may be 10 more years, but I didn't want to make that commitment. So we searched out a new product and decided to um, um, change the put up on it. So as Carrie mentioned, or Fontel mentioned, this is Mia 2 now, and these, these are 100 gram skeins instead of two ounce skeins. So they're 350 yards in a skein, not quite the equivalent of two skeins of Mia, Merino Mia, but, but almost. And um, that has um, allowed us to keep the price down where it should be, because, well, all wool has gotten expensive, but closer to what it should be because I'm able to buy um, a six months worth of yarn at a time and then six months worth of yarn and six months of yarn. So I didn't have to fill my warehouse with um, tons of wool that I may or may not ever sell. So at any rate, um, a lot of older patterns can be reimagined in uh, Mia 2, but unlike Merino Mia, which we, um, stocked in a huge number of multicolors. Mia 2 is, stack, is stocked in our chroma colors. And most of what you're seeing, actually all of what you're seeing here are chroma colors with the exception of a couple of um, neutrals. We have a black, we have a cream, and we have a nice silvery gray. Um, so these, these are kept in stock and that's the good part for you. Um, although I let the stocks get down a little bit because we were really busy this fall, which is a nice thing. Um, so usually when you order things out of Mia 2, the, unless, it's, unless you need 10 skeins of one color, if it's a multicolored thing, the skeins are on the shelf and we just put the kits together and off we go. So in, while we can redo Mia, Merino Mia items, I did do some new things in Mia 2. And one of these is our spectacular corrugated rib jacket that is totally reversible. Okay, now this is a little dark, so I'm gonna put it on and, and give you the little show here. Corrugated rib is um, alternating stock bands of stockinette and reverse stockinette. And if you think about stockinette that's knit in a fine yarn on a tight needle, what happens to it? It curls. Well, when you reverse stockinette to reverse stockinette, what you get is a fabric that does this amazing sort of accordion kind of thing. And so that is, that's what I'm wearing. Now, if I flip this open, you can see that the inside is essentially the same charcoal as the sleeves. But when you just let it drop, the red shows on this side and the charcoal shows on the other side. Now, it's a lot of knitting. I will admit to you, it's a lot of knitting because in essence, you're knitting, it's about a 60 inch wide hem if you pull the hem out. Okay, so now what we have is essentially a charcoal sweater that has little bits and pieces of red that show when it spreads open. And you can see what I mean about how big the hem is. But that also builds into this an, an incredible amount of swing. So um, that is what we call the corrugated rib jacket. And now because this computer is all the way on the other side of the table, for me to show you things closely, I have to um, hop on the table, so you'll forgive me. It's a whole routine here. <laughs> but I wanna show this to you up close. And then I also wanna show you 
what um, one of Fontel's customers just completed and sent to us, or Fontel took pictures and I printed them. So hang on a sec and let me get over here. See, this is so whatever it is. Okay, so now you're seeing, see the red and now you're seeing the charcoal. And if you make your shoulder seam very tight, it really um, is, is it, it doesn't really spread up here, but it does at the hem. It has just a little tiny um, row of uh, crab, single crochet and crab stitch at the bottom. You know how when you're doing crochet into knitting, if you do too many stitches, it spreads it? Well, we did that on purpose. So you get this little lettuce edge here. That's really fabulous. So Fontel's customer did the jacket. Isn't that glorious? So these colors are much less contrasting than the colors that I used. Um, but you can see that it's almost a, um, like an op art kind of a thing where it becomes predominantly lavender when that's the outside. And then you get that beautiful lavender sleeves against the um, blue of the, of the jacket. And she didn't make her shoulder seams quite as tight as I did. So you can see that it spreads a little bit more on the shoulder and you have a total control over how you want that to be. So again, one of the beauties of us being knitters is that we can do um, bespoke, if you will, um, items. In addition to this, for spring, we had done a, well, for spring, for forever, whenever, a, um, a vest. So you don't have to put sleeves on it. And this particular vest has two sides to it that move through a range of colors. So you have these three pinky lavendery colors, and then you have these three sagey aqua colors. So this is a fun piece, all bound together with this contrasting. On this side, it's a very contrasting trim, that, that warm adobe color. This is a little bit flippier, a little shorter, and a little bit flippier at the bottom um, with some short rows. And then if you turn it the other way, it really is an entirely different garment. In this direction, the garment, the, the pop of this adobe now blends in. It's not quite the contrast as a trim as you had from the other side. And as you move, you still get the little bits of color popping through from that corrugated stitch. So this is the corrugated rib jacket and the corrugated rib vest. And um, because I saw Fontel's customer's piece, I decided that yes, in fact, while this is fun with all of its different colors, there's something quite, quite lovely about that. So we put together some solids for you and there's kind of in two different directions. You can do a tonal thing, which is just a light and a dark. Okay, so a light and a dark a neutral and a color. See, that's a deep violet. Or you can do, and this one is kind of the same way um, because they're not um, hugely contrasting in their hues. Or you can get a little bit crazier and, uh, you know, I think that's incredibly rich. Carrie says that's hers. <laughs> I love this one too. I think that's pretty fantastic. This is um, two of the colors that's used here. So you can see what that would be like. And then if you just like a lighter color, that's a pretty wonderful combination as well. Now, I want you to know that m many of you have heard about Chroma. For those of you who haven't, the Chroma range and the Chroma Noir range each one is 12 colors that go around the entire color wheel, okay? So there's a yellow, a red, a blue, and everything in between. And the, the light version 
So let's see. So there you go. There's the light version and the darker version, the noir version of the same teal. So all of these 12, 24 colors are, are, are made so that they go together. Um, so you can take really any two colors from the chroma wheel and make this jacket and it's going to look spectacular. The chroma colors, so we've put all of these colors on as options. They all have names and you can look at their pictures. But if you are not seeing what you want, either you contact Pontel or you look at the chroma wheels, which are on the site and pick your own colors. And we're happy to do that. I mean, if you're, if you're, um, fondest desire is that you want, you know, black with a brighter red, like a true ruby red, hey, we can do that. You know, we can, we can do whatever you want, but you can always go to the PRISM site to see all of the colors that I dye. And, and Fontel is happy to order for you um, projects in, in the colors that you really, really want, because let's face it, we don't want to see ourselves coming and going, right? We want to be unique. I don't blame you. Me too. All right. Are there any questions about these corrugated ribs? I'm going to mention for people who don't know that Mia 2 is 100% machine washable um, merino wool. It's in a sock weight. Yep. And for those of you who ever used merino Mia, Mia 2 is exactly the same quality it's it's the same nice tightly twisted very bouncy very forgiving um merino that's um 19 and a half microns or, or whatever it you know so it's very it's very soft hi there nice. okay is that it the only question we have there all right let me um get my empty box scoot these off the table. Well, I put them in a box because we can come back to them if we have questions later, if we need to do that. Okay, so staying with Mia 2, one of the first things that I did with Mia 2, and, and um, some of you may know, if I have, yes, I do. Some of you may know the book that I did for XRX called Artful Color Mindful Knits. Um, the cover sweater of this is called Sonata and has been one of the absolutely most popular things that I ever designed. Um, lots and lots of Sonatas running around. You go to Stitches and lots and lots of Sonatas running around. It's, it's um, in Merino Mia, so it's on a smaller needle. It is half linen stitch. That's what makes the beautiful um, color combinations. But it's the styling of this jacket that suits every single person that puts it on. It's just, it's what I call the Eileen Fisher aesthetic, which is a boxier body with a narrow sleeve. Okay, so you, the body then can fit a variety of sizes and it's generous enough that with no closure, it hangs closed, okay? It doesn't do this, right? You know what I mean? When, the, when, the, when a jacket isn't full enough, this is what it does, and this does not do that. Do that. Okay? This is, um, I'm seeing my neckline is a little goofy. There we go. This jacket, is, so it, I have this little platform here that I stand on. So this jacket is is boxy. What keeps it from making me look bigger than I am is the fact that it's a very soft drapey fabric and the fact that the sleeves are narrow. So if the sleeves aren't narrow and I put my arms out like this and the sleeve is like here, then I just look like I'm a big person. Okay, so you want your sleeves to be as narrow as you are comfortable with. Um, and you can see it's just it's, it, 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 it's not A-lined, but it just has a little bit of flair to it. So this was the actual very first piece that we did with Mia 2. And we had done a, a lot of gradient packs with Merino Mia, but now we had skeins that were twice the size. So this was a different kind of gradient. Instead of just going from light to dark, 
This one actually goes, starts with a, a taupe, which is a brownish gray. It starts with a taupe and it goes through grayer, 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 and then it starts to add blue until you get to this really lovely midnight blue in the center. So it's a little more interesting than just a straight gradation, yet it is still a very neutral um, jacket. The jacket has um, a collar band that is done um, in a much quicker gradation, double wide and then with a turning row, turned over and, and attached in the front so that you really, it gives you the extra weight on the front and it makes for, uh, it just makes it, it just makes it lay properly. So we only make this in two colors, two color ways. This, which we call um, tranquility and one that we call dusk and the dusk, of course, did I think to bring it? I've got it, so I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. It's warmer. You see, you'll see it on the um, on the site. It's um, beiges to eggplant, beiges through rust to eggplant. So really, really pretty. Now, more exciting than that was when we decided to do the same jacket in chroma colors. So now, ah, there they're they're showing you the dusk, the dusk version. So now we have a jacket that has a lot more personality. It's the same fit. And if any of you have made Sonata and you're wondering what else I did that's different, I did a, in the Sonata, it was a, um, a straight drop sleeve. So the sleeve was, the shoulder seam was way down here. This is an inset tee. It does, it's not real obvious when you are looking at it, it just gets the shoulder line up a little bit higher. It makes it a little neater. So this is in a chroma run and um, um, these are the chroma noir colors. And again, we have several options there on the site. This one starts with this burnt orange and winds up with the teal in the center. There are people who said, I don't want the burnt orange. So we started in the copper and ended in the spruce green. I mean, you can kind of pull it wherever you want to pull it. It's really a stunning piece. These are heirloom pieces. The, these, these will never go out of style. It is a lot of knitting, but it's absolutely worth it because it becomes your go-to jacket that the, the they look great um, with any kind of, you know, they're long enough that you can wear them with dresses, you can wear them with trousers, you can, you, you can have a tunic underneath it that's longer. It's just a really gorgeous piece. So do I have any question about these? Laura, can you address sizes? I know there are three sizes in the Sonata in, in both of these. Um, yes. Yes, so this is, as I've said, is meant to be oversized, okay? And um, so I have given it three sizes. The one that you're looking at is size, I think it's size two, hang on. <laughs> it's been too long, <laughs> I don't remember. Um, and I, you know, I'm kind of the quintessential medium. The nice thing about this is that- a little bit maybe. Oh, there used to be a, there used to be a, okay, I'll do it this way. Yeah, so this one is the, um, this one is the size two, the medium, what I, the medium, the medium slash large, it's 52 inches, okay, it's a 52 inch bust. So there's a lot of ease built in. The small size is a 46 inch bust or hip and the um, large size is a 58 inch and there's enough yarn to do any of those sizes but the pattern is sized um, for those three different sizes Lawrence, knitting side to side so mostly it's how much you knit laura this is nini did you talk about different colorways there are a few there are a few different colorways on the website um 
in the chroma range. So it's it's eight colors. So in the chroma, if you don't see what you like, it's eight, any eight colors in a row from either the chroma or the chroma noir. In this one, there's only this, which we call tranquility, and dusk, which is the warmer version. Both of those colorways are on the website. If you have in mind something else, talk to us, you know? I mean, one of the nice things about being semi-retired and, and working at the pace that I'm working is that I can do things for people that are particular to them. So we, okay. we can certainly have a discussion okay. through Fontel. Talk to her first and then um, we'll narrow it down and, and then we can address it. Yes, Fontel, doesn't that sound right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Anything else with these? All right. All right, now we're gonna we're going to move to I got myself all organized. We're gonna move to our petite, our petite Madison-based shawls. And Fontel, do you want to take it away with your new piece? Sure. And I'll just put I'll put all you while you do that, I will put the colorways that I Okay, you know what, Brian? Okay. Before we do that, yeah, um, I have a couple of little thank you prizes for people there you go. that kind of fit into this. And I'm going to show you the prizes. The prizes are little mini gradient kits. This is Merino Mia. So there's a Mochiana. And then here's a blue. So we put everybody's name in a drawing. So I'm going to shake it up and Carrie's going to draw. We need to know if you're here, though. Okay, because yeah, you have to be here. So we, not everyone is here. Maria Myron. Maria, are you on? I am. Oh, Maria. Hi, All right. I Maria. am. Do you want the blue or do you want the gold? The blue. All righty. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay, so now we have one more. And you get the mocha. And you get the mocha. Open she has to open them up. Barbara LeBlanc, are you on? Barbara. I am. Great, Barbara. I am. You know, um, I am. I am not a mocha person at all. So... You know, okay. you can go. You can draw somebody else. Are okay. you sure? Yes, I'm very sure. kind. Of, very kind. Um, of, we'll find. We'll right. find a mocha girl. All righty. Okay. Can you multicast that girl? I can. All righty, deal. All right, Debbie Bellinghausen. Debbie Bellinghausen. Are you on, Debbie? I am very much on. Great. Yay! This is oh, thank you. So <laughs> lovely. All righty. So do we, we have all their addresses? I have her address, but Debbie can drive up. Okay. I'm coming up. Sure. <laughs> all right. Okay. Come up. We have all more right. later, but that's what thank we Thank you. Right now. You are so welcome. All right. So Laura mentioned that um, we just did something new here in the store. And I did a two skein Petite Madison wrap. It's called the Agatha Shawl and the pattern is on Ravelry. But it is stunning. It is this. So my friend Sue Hickenbottom knit this for us. So there you go. All right, we'll take it off as well. But you, you can see that it is slip stitched. And then through the garter section, look at these wonderful little interesting details. It's a big triangle. It, it only took two skeins. Uh, Laura has put together color combinations. This one is melon and ebony, but I want you to see this. Look at the work that's done through the garter sections. Isn't that just stunning? So, and then here is the, and there's the edge. It is absolutely gorgeous on, I love this piece. So um, two skeins of Petite Madison. Easy to do because it's all slip stitches. Lots of fun and lots of fun to wear. And so check out the website and the color options there. All right, Laura. 
Great. Well, I want to talk to you all a little bit about the color choices for this. Excellent. Because, okay. because the, the, what, what Fontel has done um, with her choice is, is a little more subtle. And um, you either have to, you have to have contrast somewhere in order for a pattern like that to show up. That's about as subtle as you can get, I think, and still make it read. But I've put together some sort of interesting combinations for you. Um, because the lines are so thin, all right, and because it's a fine yarn, um, it's not hitting you over the head. And um, so what I have done is, is um, this would be about the same level of contrast as what Fontel has. So she has ebony and melon. This is Huron, which is a deep teal and adobe. So it's, um, you know, you look at it like this, you think, wow, that's a lot of contrast. But you can see in Fontel's that, you know, when you get all those little tiny stripes in there, it isn't a great deal of contrast. So that's a consideration when you're putting these together. Now I played around a little and I thought that a solid with a slight multicolor would be really magical because they always are in, in mosaics mm -hmm. and those little stripes. So this is um, shale, which is a taupe with goldenrod, just a little bit of warmth in it. And this is um, steely blue deep blue with a, a gray and cream um, combination. So all of these are going to show that really, really well in, in contrast. Okay. Then you can take this down just a little bit. And this is still going to show up about like that does. But this has more color in it than, say, this combination. Okay, but still you can see that there's that there's contrast and it's going to show up. Then you can get really interesting and that's kind of what I've done uh, with these others. So okay. these are both on the dark side, but this is neutral and this is, you know, brilliant reds. So it's going to show up um, in a different way than that does, but it is still going to show up. And the same thing is true with this. I, I'm actually dying to try this. I think it cool. would be incredible. And, um, and ditto this. I think that's really a lovely combination. And this is a really nice, this is pansy. So it's a really nice purple. So anything that's using a little multicolor, the pattern is going to come and go a little bit. It'll be a little bit more mysterious. And, and you'll see some other mosaics that I have coming up. So you can see what I mean by that. But I wouldn't be afraid of doing that at all. I think that um, all of these colors, any of these color combinations would work and be very interesting. And I don't know, Fontel, that's so gorgeous. I may have to make one up. <laughs> so, so Laura, yeah, we just like to mention that this really is an elegant yarn. Yeah. It's 75% merino, 15% cashmere, and 10% silk. And this feels really light. Yes. Lightweight for the size draping. of this. It's so, very lightweight. It's a too. single ply yarn, and it's, it's just lovely to wear. So thank you, Laura. And, and Fontel, good point. Um, this is a lovely yarn, but because it's a single, it is much better off for accessories than it is for whole garments. Okay. Yeah, much more recommend that. If you want to do a garment, use Mia too, or Symphony. Yeah. If you want to do, if you want to use this yarn, which truly is luxurious, then make an accessory. So that's why we mostly make shawls with with Petite Madison because because it's what makes sense. Okay. Any any questions about this one in particular before I move on? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a question. What was it called again? And what were Fontel's colors? The Agatha shawl. And my color was melon and ebony. Thank you. We'll put that in the chat as well. Okay. Thanks. 
-hmm. And if we, if, you know, at the end, if anybody wants to revisit these, I'm, I'm carefully putting them back in their pairs so that I won't forget what's what there. Okay. Well, now we're going to go on to one of my faves. And some of you may know about our triple treat, which was um, a set of a trio of patterns that used one skein of petite Madison one skein of radiant petite medicine, which is the same thing as petite medicine, but it has a lovely little um, gold and silver um, stellina is what they call it. It's almost like um, it's almost like metallic cellophane. It's just the slightest bit of metallic, and then shimmerati. So what we're looking at is shimmerati is our yarn that has is studied with sequins. Petite Madison you saw, and then that's the Radiant Petite Madison. And you can see that the, the um, metallic is really very subtle. So just set that aside for the moment. Well, so we, I had done a long time ago, a set of a trio of patterns we called Triple Treat. And with the new Chroma whole range, I start, I thought it's, this has been again, one of the most popular accessory patterns I ever did. This is called Jaipur. And it's just a really fun group of pattern stitches that are selected to look good on either side. So you don't have to worry about whether you're, you have the right side or the wrong side showing. And um, it, it um, contrasts um, pattern stitches, with textured stitches, with stripes, and then the shimmerati is thrown in there every once in a while. So in this one, the um, the melon color, the cantaloupe, is the petite radiant petite Madison. The cypress, the the green one, is the um, petite Madison, and the raspberry accent is the shimmerati. So this is a fabulous big um, rectangular scarf that is really kind of you know you really could use it as a as a as a as a shoulder wrap um it's really big enough for that but i also really like it um this way so this is my favorite way to wear long skinny um scarves i'm going to make sure you all know how to do this so i think we all know that you can double it over stick your arm through and pull it through like that. Okay. Now ignoring my tag. The problem with that is see how big it gets right here. So I've, oh. I, I have changed that just a little bit. And what I do is I put my hand through, I take one of the tails and pull it through. Now I go in the other way. So the same way that the tail just went through and pull the other one through and it makes like it's it's like a little weaving and see how much flatter it is right there so, and it's not going anywhere it's definitely going to stay there so that's a cool you know there's always got to be a sidebar here that's kind of a cool way of doing it but it this is is fun because it's long enough that you can you know you can really do whatever you want to with it so this is now called the dynamic duo because not only do you get the pattern for this, but the pattern leaflet includes the pattern for this. Now, ugh, I'm just going to take this off. I think I took all these off and then I said, oh my God, I don't know what anything is anymore. I better put all the tags back on and there they are. All right. And this is what happens. I take them off and then I say, oh, I got to put them all back on. So this is a large arced wrap. Okay. And that's accomplished with short rows. You can see that the pattern um, bends around and also um, strategic decreasing. So it's both things. It's asymmetrical. You know, it's, it's deeper. The deep part is further away from this end than it is from this end. And this is also a really fun piece to wear a number of different ways. So if I can do this properly, it does this, the most fabulous thing on the back, which of course I can't see. 
but hopefully I know well enough how to get it right. So you get it just, you know, I'm looking at the computer screen to do this. So. <laughs> and can you see that when you get it just right, it just has this beautiful layered look on the backside. And it's long enough that this is staying right where it's supposed to stay. Um, but you also can get a little crazier with it because this end, because of the curving, will spiral around like that, which I think is a pretty cool look. There we go. And I think Fontel has these in the store. All of these pieces are also Perfect for those nice shawl belts. Yeah, that looks really nice with that on. And then, you know, it just stays. And, and here's where the um, asymmetry play comes into play because you now have this one very long end. Um, and if you don't like that hanging down, you just offset it a little bit and tuck it in. I mean, this just, there's kind of endless things that you can do to make these look great. So now I'm gonna give you another little color lesson, okay? Because in order for pattern stitches to, like this to show, and I'll, I'll get here so you can see, both of these pieces that I've looked at, we've looked at so far, have these lovely little pattern stitches in them. And in order for these pattern stitches to really show up, you have to have some light and dark contrast. So that's what we have in both of these cases, light and dark contrast. And you can see that when I stand away, you still have the sense that there's pattern stitches in there. But that's not the only way you can do it. You can also select colors that are needed, that have hue difference. Okay, so this has both hue and, they both have both hue and, and, and uh, value difference, light and dark difference. But this one, I've got to take this tab off because it'll drive me crazy. Um, but this one only has really hue difference. There's not a lot of um, contrast in this one. And the color is very much richer. Okay, this is what happens when you, when you have a lot of, of um, contrast, light and dark, it kind of kills the colors. It, it, it's, not that they, it's not that they are reduced to black and white, but they're reduced to light and dark. Okay, so you, it, unless you're really close to this, you'd be hard pressed to know. I guess you can kind of see that it's a, a, a sort of wheat color, but you, you'd be hard pressed to know that that's a deep violet until you get way, way up close to it. This one is much more about color, okay? So this one has a lot more about color in it. And yet, because there's not much contrast, when you get this far away, you lose the fact that there are um, pattern stitches. There's not, it's, it's not that that's a bad thing. It's really okay if you have things that read a certain way from 100 feet and then they look a little different at 50 feet and then they look different at 10 feet and then they look different when you get all the way up to um, five feet, okay? And when you get close to this, it's really quite lovely. So you might be intrigued and wanna draw closer and closer and closer to see just what's going on in there. But it's two different looks and you have to be careful when you're making your choices that you know which kind of, of um, which kind of face you're going to get, what what you're going to get that's um that's really present how it's going to present, I guess, from all of those differences d distances. Right. So yeah, can you two things? Can you mention the two colors that are in the wheat and plum wrap? Yes, wheat and pansy <laughs> and pansy. And Yep, and Tahoe is the um, um, the Shimmerati, and this is the one we call Gilded Jewels. 
And this we called, I have a, I have a cheat sheet for this. Yes, I do, because I couldn't remember what they are. This is the one we call Gilded Jewels. This is Cornucopia. And these are all on the website. And this one is um, Fall Blooms. And could you possibly put Fall Blooms back on and show that weave again? You know, to- Yes, to yes, through. absolutely. Okay, let me take the tag off because that was really bugging me. <laughs> it was making it hard to do the little thing right. <laughs> So while Laura okay. is doing that, we're just going to remind you that if you go on the website, www.greatyarns.com, and at the top in the headers, you can go under presentation and click on presentation, and you'll see many of the things that we're presenting tonight, but a few of them aren't under presentation as these are, and you'll go to the left under the kit heading and scroll down to PRISM and all of these kits will come up, including these. And you'll see the other colors that these are in. So um, you can find that there or ask us. That's what I was trying to do on me. <laughs> you can see that it's harder to, I mean, it's easy to do when you can see it, but just the fact that you get those curves kind of opposing one another is, is very nice. Okay, so you take a long rectangle like this and you just put it over your hand, around your neck, and now you grab just one of the tails and you pull it through, okay? Now, going in the opposite way, so going, you don't, if you come back and do this, then you've just done the same thing. So going in the opposite way, now you pull the other end through and it's just done a little woven catch there. Thanks so much. Actually, actually looks, actually looks woven. I mean, it actually is a weave. Mm -hmm. Leave you. it to a weaver, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so I do have colorways that we put on the website. I do have them to show you. Um, all right, I can give you the names on these. This one is, whoops, wrong sheet. This one is, um, this one is called Blossoms. No, it isn't. <laughs> That's Blossoms, there we go. That's because something got, uh, ah, I hate it when that happens. Um, this is Blizzard. You can it's click colors too. While she's showing yeah. these, I mean, if anybody wants the colors as you see them, you can claim them. Just let us know. Oh, they're, they're on the website, Carrie. These are um, repeatable. Perfect. So actually, this one that I called Gilded Jewels, there are the three colors that make that up. Reeve Gauche, I think that would be stunning. Just absolutely stunning. I love this one too. This one is No wonder I love this one. It's the one I did. So <laughs> these are the three colors that are in this one. And I do love this one quite a lot. So that's cornucopia. And then we've got orchard. Kind of the epitome of fall. And I think that the reason that, yes, the reason that those were together is because this is what is in this and these were sharing this same you can tell when i really like a color i just keep using it <laughs> so all right do we have any questions about about those the nice thing is you don't even have to decide until you get it which you want to make because both patterns are in there okay we're good 
All right. All right, I don't need that anymore. And those guys can go there. But I do need this. Okay. So the last of our pieces that are made with um, Petite Madison is this fabulous oversized monster called Synchronicity. And this was really um, a play of, of color. Um, it has just a little bit, it's, it's mostly garter stitch and garter stitch stripes. It has just a little tiny bit of um, two color fisherman's rib trimming it out. It is a very generous triangle that, um, that you could wear this way, but really begs to be, begs to be draped. And you'll notice that I like them generous enough that you're not just doing this because what happens with this? This is forever falling. So I like them to be generous enough that this can come all the way around because if you can get it all the way around, it's going to stay there. And again, this is something that would look just fabulous. Oh, I like the other color. Just fabulous with with a cuff on it. I mean, it just it just um, the the word that comes to mind is insouciant. It just makes you devil may care. Um, I can go do 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 all day long, and this isn't going anywhere. And looks great in the back. So this is um, four colors of Petite Madison. So <clears throat> it's a little bit, it's a little bit more generous. And I will tell you that I, I'm gonna. So you always have to get little lessons from Laura when when I'm speaking. And I just had a customer who purchased it through another store contact me because she had run out of the first color, um, sort of about here, and she said. My, my stitch gauge is right on, but my, my row gauge isn't exactly on, right on. I don't know if that's why. Well, her row gauge was bigger. And because in this, you're not knitting to a measurement, you're knitting numbers of rows. What's gonna happen if your stitch, if your rows are all, if every row is a little bit bigger, you're using up more yarn. So in this instance, and I, this is, I, love, I love giving this little lecture to everyone because it's something that most of us don't think about. The row gauge is as important as the stitch gauge, okay? And the tendency on all of us is it, it, we try the needle and if we get the stitch gauge, we say, oh, we're there. Even if the row gauge is off and you, you can't do that, <laughs> especially in a pattern where you're being told to knit a number of rows because you might run out of yarn. Um, if your rows are tighter and you're knitting to a measurement, guess what's gonna happen? You're also gonna run out of yarn, maybe. So here's what I've learned. Fairly often, if, if what you want in your gauge is to have the closest balance between the stitch and the row gauge as you possibly can. So if your stitch gauge is right on, but your row gauge is off, and hers was off by two rows over four inches. So it was off by a half a row per inch. That's quite a lot. She should have gone down a needle size. Okay, and you're all saying, yeah, but then my stitch gauge would get tight. Not necessarily. That's what we all don't re realize. Not necessarily. Your stitch gauge might not have gotten tighter your row gauge might have gotten tighter and then it would all be just fine. Okay. So I just had that happen actually with two people. It just happened with two people on two different projects. So, um, so there you are. It's, it's important that you get um, everything just right. But 
But what I told her, because she would I had already knit up to here, was don't just eliminate some rows. On something like this, if you if you know, it's not going to make a difference if there's too fewer rows in that section or too fewer rows in that section. So she's she's happily going onward. I had about half an ounce, a quarter of an ounce that I sent to her. So she's happy. I'm happy. We're all happy. So synchronicity. This is a wonderful, wonderful piece, and I do have some color combinations to show you. Um, Again, it doesn't have to all be, you know, color, color, color. I'm the color queen, but it doesn't have to all be color. Um, I rather think that something like this. So in this one, it's this um, yellow orange that is the accent. So this would be the majority of the wrap with just accents of that. And I think that would be just absolutely exquisite or accents of that it's a little darker it's a little harder to see but i think either of those would be just really really exquisite and there are more colors on the site than i was able to pull for tonight um, but here's a, a a darker version of this one so you get these beautiful deep burgundy violet ranges and then you've got that burnt that burnt orange that's just the tiny bit of accent in it would be really beautiful all right any questions about synchronicity okay all right. now, yes while you get set for the next one we're going to do a couple of more prizes. All righty. Good, All right. because I wanted to get a swatch that I Excellent. forgot to get. So let me okay. get that. So the next two prizes are, it's for this kit. And it's called the Shaded Shift Scarf. So in, in the kit is a half a skein of stuff. Yeah. And so and two skeins of Windward. All right, so we're going back to the bucket. All right, I get to pull this time. And you're right, it's kind of a test on oh, Curly. <laughs> you didn't see that. Toka Smith, are you here? Toka? She may not be on. Okay. All right. We'll pull another one. Who, who was it? Toka, Toka Smith. Smith. No. No. We have Ellen Vanderney. Vanderney. Ellen? I am here. Yay! 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 I think Toka is here too. Toka, are you here? I'm here. I'm here. On the screen. Okay. All right. So Toka and Ellen, you both hey. are winning a one of these kits. Oh, um, wonderful. So Toka, we pulled your name first. So we have we have two kits. We have one in slates and grays, and one in aquas and gold and golds. Which one do you oh. want, Toka? Oh, I think the slate and gray would be great. Slate and gray. All right. That's Toka's. And then Ellen, you are going to get the teals. Sounds perfect. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Oh, thank thank you. you. Thank so you. Great. So thank much. you. Joining us. Absolutely. All right. So Laura, are you are you good to go? I am good to go. All righty. So the next piece I'm going to show you is um, was in Vogue knitting um, in the um, if I forget winter of. 20 i forget when it was exactly um and and we showed it it was shown in that magazine in in these colors and of course it's the one thing i forgot to rustle up before we started this tonight because i don't have that color to show you but i have this color to show you now the piece that we did for vogue was humongous and it's on the website so if you go to the website and you look at the mosaic wrap you'll see pictures of the um oh i I know, I think I have it like right at my fingertips. Sorry. 
I thought I had everything all in order and you know, <laughs> these things happen. Uh, no, okay, sorry, nope. All right, never mind. You get the idea. The one that's shown on Vogue is even wider than this and even longer than this. So you will see on Fonchal's website that there are two sizes. This is the smaller size. All right, so it's really plenty big enough. And this is um, a masterful piece of mosaic knitting, if I do say so myself. Um, it combines two patterns. And the one pattern that is on the sides in the middle and at the middle on the bottom is a very, very simple pattern. The other one looks incredibly complex, but is actually pretty easy to memorize. Um, I found that I only had to do, I think, two full repeats and I had it memorized. Um, so the colors that we did it for, for Vogue, were these two. So it's just a light version and a dark version of a, a warm um, beige and taupe and gray um, combination. And then my friend Brigitte said, I want something with more color. So we picked two related light and dark blue and green combinations. And I've been thinking about it a lot. And I think that this would be incredibly spectacular if there was a solid and a multicolor or two wildly divergent multicolors. So for instance, we have a tonal green here and then we have these hot um, tropical colors. And I know those colors go really well together because I've used them together in garments before. And that I think would be ama amazing. But you have to really love color. You have to be bold and love color to do that. Um, also, something like this, which is um, a charcoal gray with a purple and light gray. Now, this is going to be much more subtle, more similar to this. But I think uh, I'm trying to decide right now which one to make up. I'm kind of leaning towards this. I think that would be just fantastic. Um, so this is um, Maui and Moss. They're all labeled on the website. The original is Kilimanjaro and Denali. This is Blue Lagoon and Tamarack. This is Winterfell and 702. This is Highlands and Cypress. Um, like I said, I'm leaning towards this one, but maybe you all can help me make a decision. This is Blueberry and Yosemite. I think that also would be really quite something. So I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards one of those two. It's another, if you love color, my friend Jan is here. This might be just the right one for you. Blueberry and freesia. I think that would be really, really gorgeous. Um, a little more subtle, but contrasting warm and cool. Teal with embers. So Huron and embers. And then if you like a lighter look, um, this is Time and Portofino, I think that would be really lovely. Or Ocean Breeze and Sedona, that's like such a traditional um, desert kind of color combination. So, okay, so everybody vote. Which one should I do? This is Blueberry and Yosemite. This is Cypress and Highlands. It's going to be a tie, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I can't hold them up there any longer. It's getting too hard to hold. Laura, it is a tie. I mean, it is blueberry. <laughs> Every blueberry, yeah. we get a cypress. So yeah, and it keeps. Oh yes. <laughs> well, okay. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna um I'm gonna make a decision. I have a knitter who's available, so I'm gonna make a decision in the next few days. But it is about ex 
counting exactly if there was one a little more over the other it's blueberry yeah this one yeah 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 we'll tally it up at the end of the night and let you know okay ah. okay well i think there's probably more contrast in this one so the patterns might show up a little bit better that's the one thing i would say i don't know all right are there any questions about this Okay. I had a question about how many um, skeins of yarn that takes. So it takes um, six of each to do this size or 15 total to do the other size, eight of one and seven of the other. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And as I said, this is, you can only imagine how large the other one is because you can see that this is really really a generous size plenty big enough i got a little carried away it was something i knit myself and i just kind of kept going um and i like i like it i like the other one but it, it it's it's big it's almost a lap robe it's so big so in reality i think that this one is this one is fine <laughs> you only have to go go that crazy if you're i don't know if you're me <laughs> or something and what is that one? What is that called? The this pattern? is the um, Symphony Mosaic Wrap. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right, let's see. I think I can just push these to All the right. side. Blueberry wins, Laura. <laughs> Blueberry wins? Yeah. OK. By three. By three. Good I to know. Oh, well, that's pretty much a tie. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's pretty close to a tie. Okay, now I'm going to talk about keyed up. And this is, um, Montel, I think this was the very first thing I did with the, once I started dyeing Symphony in Chroma, I think this was the very first thing that I did. Yeah, yes. Sure. Yeah. And this is, again, a big, long, rectangular scarf that is almost deep enough to be a wrap. I mean, you could certainly, it certainly comes down on your shoulders if you need it to do that. And you could, um, again, do it up with um, with one of the belts or, again, long enough that you can really get it around and around yourself so that you don't have to worry about it falling off. Now, this is spectacular in a very simple short row. Okay, that's what is making that pattern. And um, it, it, if you've never done short rows before, um, you, you do have to know how to pick up the wraps, even though it's in garter stitch. And you have to because you are short rowing by one stitch every single time. So it's just going to make holes if you don't do the, um, the picking up. But it is such a cool look to have those um wedges and then the up the opposing colors going down the sides i really love that so this is in chroma the original color this is called crayons and there are a number of other colors in there there are more subtle colorways there are darker color colorways and here's a brand new one look at how spectacular this is Oh my God, Laura. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Mm -hmm. That is gorgeous. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Just beautiful. So there's this one, which I think I called, I think I called this blizzard. And then there's an then there's one that is not quite, it doesn't get, it doesn't get this light or this light. So they're the same thing, neutrals, but they're you don't get the brightness on either edge. Um, that we called winter solstice. So those I think are just really beautiful. And um, yeah. What colorway are you calling this one, Laura? I think this is blizzard. Blizzard. Yeah. See how cool that looks in the back? It's a lot of bang for the um, 
for the buck. So you know how you're not supposed to drink wine and knit at the same time? So my knitter was supposed to knit this piece and this was the other, um, this was the other experience I recently had where um, her rows were too loose and she ran out of yarn before she got the last two rows on the whole section done. So I said, oh my God, I've gotta, I've gotta do this because this is actually for a class that I'm teaching this weekend um, for Stitches at Home. And I really wanted to have the sample. So I sat there one night and I, it's not like I was drunk. I had, you know, a glass of wine and I've got my little markers out and it's a lot of stitches to cast on. I don't remember how many, almost 300. And I'm marking every 50 stitches and I get about halfway through and I realize that on, on one, on the warm colors, I, I'm almost running out of yarn and on the cool colors, I have lots it's 50 stitches shorter on one side than it is on the other. So just, just so that everyone knows that even the professionals oh, make that kind of mistakes and there was no way I was going to tear it out. But you know what? It's still plenty big enough. I don't need it to be any bigger than this, really. So it's just a little asymmetrical. I like it. And that's the way it is. <laughs> Folks. And that's the way it is. So it was very funny. Very funny on myself. Okay, do we have any questions about keyed up? You know, just I'm going to address a couple things. Um, it says that's knit like autumn leaves jacket. Yes. And no blizzard colorway on the site. And that's probably because it's brand new, brand new. So mm -hmm. if um, you know what? because I think I just sent this picture and I called it blizzard, but I bet you she didn't put it in it's as a done. colorway. So just let us know you want it. We'll send it. Yeah, that's not a problem. We know what it is. Yeah. And, and we'll fix it. Yes, <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> we'll fix it. <laughs> okay, we good with keyed up? All right. But we're going to continue with symphony, which for many of us is um, it's the perfect yarn. Um, it, it's, it is, as Petite Madison is, a um, merino, fine merino, cashmere, and in this case, nylon blend. And the nylon is in there because this is much more of a workhorse. This is meant to be garments. And nylon um, adds a resilience, okay, um, that nothing else does. And also a longevity, okay. And the nylon is what they call intimately blended. So the nylon fibers are, are in the, the, the sliver as it goes into the mill to get spun. So it's not like you get a, a candy cane of nylon thread through it or something. It's a totally intimate blend. And there's enough cashmere that you can feel it. You know, you can feel it. And yes, there's nylon, but you can't feel the nylon at all. It's a really lush yarn. The nice thing about Symphony is, oh, got to show you this. Just got to find one. The nice thing about Symphony is that it's incredibly resilient. The um, mill that, that spins it, um, it is a top-notch um, computerized mill in North America, I might add. And I want you to look at this. Okay, see, see how much bounce it has? That makes it an extremely forgiving yarn. So if you are a not the most even knitter in the world, Symphony is going to be great for you um, because of that resilience. And if you're a tight knitter, also nice because it gives on the needle. Um, it's just a really, really good yarn. That resilience also allows you to go anywhere from a size six needle up to a size nine needle and make it work. So if you are making a garment, then you're probably going to be down at five to the inch maybe even five and a half to the inch. You can push it that tight if you had purpose for it. Slippers, maybe. Um, if you 
are making accessories like the um, keyed up that I was just showing you. Saw, you saw how bouncy they were. Uh, that was up on a nine needle. So you can run that whole gamut and it, and it, and it behaves and it does nice things. So here are some fun um, ponchos, basically, capelets. I don't know what you would want to call them. They have kind of that corrugated rib in the neck. Okay, so it's, see how tall the neck is? Well, the point is that you bring it down and it scrunches down around your neck and it's kind of really warm and cozy and fabulous. And if you're out in the snow and it's cold, you can bring it up and it's amazing how nice and warm that is. And this is the, uh, there are two sizes. This is size one. And again, just so you know, we don't always get it right the first time. This size is okay for me. I'm not a, a big person, um, but I realized that it's just, a, it's just a little limiting, okay? It could either be shorter or wider. So trying to keep it the same, this is seven skeins of symphony. I'm trying to keep it the same for another size. Now this is a chroma run, all right? See, it's, it's going through seven of the chroma colors right in a row. This one is a little wider and thus a little shorter because it's just, again, only seven skeins. So you do have the two sizes. And I think that probably most people would be just as happy with this one. Um, that little bit of shorter is just fine. And the wider is, whew, the wider is giving, is giving me a lot more um, motion ability. So this could pop on over a coat um, if a light jacket. I know actually a lot of you um, on the West Coast, you get cooler weather that isn't like deep freeze weather. Um, whoops, almost losing my earbud here. Unlike Michigan, where <laughs> once it starts being cold, it's cold. You couldn't do this in Buffalo or in Michigan, but you might be able to um, in, in, a very nice, um, in a very nice way, over a coat, over a light jacket, just inside where it, it, if suddenly you get cold, you can pop it on. So these are, I think we offered three combinations these two and a third one that is lighter in color. So this is our chroma poncho. And are there any questions about that? No, but I have a hand up for Toka. And Toka, I've been trying to send you a private chat, but I can't seem to do that. So do you have a question that we can answer? Uh, no, I, I didn't. But okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Um, again, while we've made these offerings, um, you know, you could you could go. I think this is all twelve colors here. There's an overlap. No, yeah, it is. So there's an overlap here, but this shows you what the entire twelve colors looks like. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. To, oh, there's one missing, one color missing. It's kind of a brown. Anyway, so, you know, you can divide it up however you want to. If it's not, again, if, it, if what you want is to include some of this orange and not have the green, well, we can do that. You know, so it's, um, there's lots of things that we can do for you that are not necessarily, we can't put everything up. We can't put everything on the site. We work really hard to get a lot of stuff up there, but... Um, any questions about this? Well, this segues really nicely into the next. Oh, no, not yet. <laughs> so if I have any entrelockers out there, this is a beautiful entrelock wrap that uses, again, chroma colors so that the main color is running from the deep teal here to the deep blueberry here through a blue. And then the accent colors are running from the deep copper orange here to the um, mustard gold over here. And you can kind of see that better on the wrong side. 
So we have made this entirely in stockinette, which makes this very subtle. If you wanted it to look more like this on the other side, you could easily um, do the accent colors in garter stitch instead of stockinette. And while this looks like, wait a minute, how did she do that? It's so simple. All it is, is that the first two rows and the last two rows of every block are done in the contrast. That's it. Other than that, it's straight entrelac. And if you've never done entrelac before, this is a wonderful um, beginning piece because there's no shaping involved. It's just a long rectangle and it keeps your interest really well. I'll never forget the time I was at a store and the um, doing an event and the store owner, I was staying with her and she said, okay, we have to look at my customer's garment when you get home because I don't know what, you know, something's wrong with the pattern. And I, I looked at it and looked at it. It was an entrelac jacket and it was a swing jacket. So it was getting smaller as you went up and there were kind of, you know, there was a lot involved in it. At some point near the end of a row, she stopped and went back the other way <laughs> and then went back the other way. And so that side seam was this much shorter than all the other side seams. Anyway, this, you don't have to worry about any of that with this. This is just straight entrelac and, um, and, and, and a fun, fun piece to do. So I don't have other colorways to show you here, but we have other colorways on the website. Are there any questions about that? Carrie, are we good? We are good. We have, I, I don't know if people have to leave at the 6.30 hour, but we have about six minutes left or so. And so um, we do want to mention, I'm going to mention that um, to those of you who don't know, um, we're having a land prism event in St. Pete next March, the end of March, uh, the very beginning of April. Um, it's a wonderful retreat that we've planned. Um, there are a few spots left because we've put a cap on at a ceiling. Um, so if you're interested in joining us for classes and dinners and, um, and this event, get a hold of us and we'll get you that information. Do um, you have anything at the moment, Franco? No, no, I just, right. I would just encourage you to, you know, if you have questions about it, please. Don't hesitate to email me or call me. Um, we are here to help you in any way. If you have questions at all, um, we'd love to see you join us in St. Petersburg. We really are excited about, um, I mean, we're gonna go, okay. You, you can't really see it because it's all behind the white walls, but we're gonna go to her warehouse. We're going shopping. We're gonna go there. We're gonna be with Laura when she starts talking about colors and whatnot. So. It truly is a unique experience and what, yeah, okay, yeah. There's I, the I, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine, now this is just a smattering of what's there, walking around and being able to peruse all of the yarns and all of the colors. It, it's a pretty fun thing to do. But we're so. gonna have a class in the um, Museum of Fine Arts and we're having classes in the Yacht Club. And we have a lot of things planned. So, so if you're interested, like I said, there, there's just a few more spots maybe because we are going to put a cap on it, but let us know. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, we have a few more things that are beautiful and we'd like to show you before you go. Okay, thanks. All right, Laura. And are you going to get, are we going to get shut off at 930? No. Okay. So said, anybody who wants to stay with us, yeah. there's just a couple more things after this one and I'll stay to the bitter end. But um, <laughs> In, in, in this whole poncho thing, which, you know, I don't know about all of you guys, but I actually love these. And of course, I live in Florida. For me, this is my outer garment. Um, but it's, it's fabulous because it doesn't matter what I'm wearing underneath it. Now, this is a Symphony six pack and it's trimmed with plume, which is what the wall behind me is now. Um, and and it, it's just, if you've not met our plume, you can kind of see it. This is the most spectacular nylon faux fur that you will ever see anywhere. It is so soft and so silky. And I put together these um, 
possible combinations, which I thought were pretty darn spectacular. Um, you know, how can you go wrong with that? And how can you go wrong with that? So I name all my red and gray and black colors Reeve Gauche, which is in honor of Yves Saint Laurent, because that was what his line was, was Reeve Gauche. And they used gray and black and red a lot. I think that's pretty spectacular. And then, you know, you got to look at this one, because this is really, this is really nice. Just all this lovely fall kind of color coming through here is great. So that is the, um, we call it the champagne and popcorn or popcorn and champagne. This colorway is champagne. Um, and it, it's, it's a playful, um, it's a playful poncho that can go out to the movies for, with popcorn or go off to, um, um, a dinner party with champagne. So there you have popcorn and champagne. And along with those, this idea, there is a stuff version. Now, if you've never used stuff before, this is the first time we're showing it to you tonight. Stuff is pretty fabulous. Stuff is a whole lot of different textures that are tied together end to end by me so that when you knit them, it changes from one texture to another, to another, to another. And these um, are all stuff pieces that have been trimmed in plume again. And they range from this one, which is um, a layers color called Violetta. And the plumes are dyed either to match or they could be dyed to contrast like this one is. This is Shadow Rose. No, Winter Shadow, sorry, Winter Shadow. And this is Tamarack. And this is Ebony. This is a little different piece and I'll show you that one as well. So all of these, whether the poncho that I'm taking off or this, which is knit a little more tightly and is either a cowl or a very sexy kind of sling it over your shoulder wrap. So this, this takes a little more plume, um, but these are all based on one skein of, of um, stuff. And in fact, this one is a little asymmetrical with some short rows. So it's a little shorter on one side and longer on the other. And Fontel, we didn't talk about this, but I think it's on there so people can find it. And if not, and this is what they want, you're going to get the you're going to get the recording or you just make a note about the winter shadow it's the winter shadow um cowl and i put together some nice colors in this as well so you can see how the um the plumes go with the colors that's ravine and we have ginger and lichen. And one of the things that's different about wild stuff or stuff, which is prisms, multi-textured yarn, is that it's all gauge coordinated, unlike other people that have done it. And I, I, have, I invented this, we started doing this in 1992. So a lot of the other ones are, um, copies and they don't take the same care that I do. In mine, the gauge is consistent. You're not going from a sock weight to a chunky. It's all meant to be on a size eight needle. Get this Pinot with this deep burgundy garnet plume. And oh, we have Cabernet. A 
that's really gorgeous too. So the yarns that are in stuff, they might be single strand, they might be double strand, and they might be triple strand. Whatever we have to do to get it to be the consistent gauge, that's what we do. And they're all, all the yarns are hand dyed. Um, in the ones that are multicolored like these, the yarns are all dyed beforehand and then it's blended together and then it's tied together and then it's measured out in those that are like this. This is lichen. This is what we call layers stuff. And these are made as is this. These are made in um, um, undyed and then dyed. And the variation that you see in the color is simply the different ways that the different um, yarns take the dye, which is really interesting. This is tied together beforehand, and then it's all dyed in the same dye bath, and you get that kind of beautiful variation just from the way the dyes behave, which I think is so interesting. And Laura, um, okay. Would you Are there like, any questions about that? I know we're getting close to our time. I have so. somebody who um, asked Probably. what's that one called, and of course now I don't know which one she was talking about. So it has to okay. be this one is called the Baby Goldilocks Poncho. Would you just go through them all? Yeah. Thank you. I'm just letting people write that down. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so the Baby Goldilocks Poncho. And this is the Foxy Cowl. And this is the Foxy Cowl Redo, okay, Redux. And both of these patterns are on the pattern. So again, you can make up your mind after you get it, which one you wanna make. So what's the mama and papa? Is it just bigger? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and the way that it's bigger is frankly, by adding in other another yarn. It's not more stuff. We're trying to keep the price within reason. So the, um, the mama, the Mama Goldilocks is um, has one skein of Symphony in it, which is compatible with Gage, and you just put it in when you can. And the uh, Papa has a skein of Madison, which is almost twice as much as the Symphony yardage-wise. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Would you show the first one again and just address the little bit of pooling that happened by happenstance in it? Yes, it just happened by happenstance. Yep. Yep, that was just totally accidental. And you see it only happens on the one color because it then increases to, it increases so that the next multicolor, it's not happening. And it was decreased from here. This is decreased, so it didn't happen there. So yeah, it's just, it was just accidental. And at some point you're gonna get, you will probably have that happen. Assuming that if it's this one and it has a multicolor there. This is a combination of multicolors and semi-solids. So you may or may not have it happen. It's only gonna happen at that stitch count. Unless your gauge is real different. And you can see, if you look at it carefully, that it doesn't run throughout that color. See the top part of that color? It's not happening. It only happens when you hit a particular stitch count. So it's going to happen at some point for you, but not necessarily exactly there. Of course, we can do that on purpose, <laughs> but that's a whole different thing. Can you hold up the red in the um, Goldilocks? Is that a Goldilocks one? Yes. Oh, yummy. Oh, is that yeah, the one this you're, is, you're calling Cabernet? Yeah, this is Cabernet. And this is actually um, um, neat stuff. So you see, it doesn't have any yeah. metallic and it doesn't have any eyelashes in it. So it's a little um, calmer than mm -hmm. the ones that have. And on the web page, it looks like there's some violet going through the neat stuff. Is that consistent or I know it varies from skein to skein a bit. No, there there is. There is. It's more of a plum. I'm okay. gonna get on the table and get this close to you. It's more of a plum. Okay. Well that's beautiful. that's pretty accurate. At least on my screen that's looking yeah, very accurate. That's 
That's beautiful. And of course, the um, plume in this case is the the dyed Cabernet uh -huh. color. So it also uh -huh. has a little bit of plumminess to it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. If you haven't used plume, it's really easy to knit. Mm -hmm. and That's fantastic to knit. Really with. soft, and for whatever reason, it always feels a little cool. <laughs> yeah, that, it's true. It's yeah. actually interesting, but yeah, it's it's cool. Yeah. It, it's true. It feels cool to your skin. Yeah. It's not sticky. It's no, it's not at all. But and you also you called the other one Violetta. Was that what? You this is yes, Violetta. Yes, Violetta, which is a layers color. Uh huh. And it's, and it's violet. Can you see how it's got almost a rustiness underneath right. it? Right. You can see it on the plume. Mm-hmm. You can so really see it on the plume. It's, mm -hmm. it's first dyed a, a pale sort of melon color, and then it's dyed um, violet over that. So that's what makes it rosier than violet, and it's what gives it that undertone, that warm undertone. I had a question on the corrugated rib. If you were yep. to do a, the like a turquoise with the black, you had two that were like, what would you recommend? <laughs> I guess that would be. Um, so the standard turquoise is, okay, now I just have to figure out where I left things, where I put things. So the, the two colors that we standardly dye that mm -hmm. are close to turquoise are Mm -hmm. or, um, ocean breeze mm -hmm. and um, Huron. Mm -hmm. um, if you really want turquoise, um, it could because this isn't exactly right. turquoise, right? right? If you really want turquoise, we we could custom dye it. Okay. You could either send me a piece of what you think is turquoise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Or right. or do some kind of almost gradient of it across. <laughs> um, no, no, uh, no, no, because because it will be a custom dye for you, and I can't dye one skein of yarn. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. right. Yeah, yeah. So to do a gradient, you wouldn't want it multicolored. That's not going to do it no. for you. No. Laura, we're going to um, you know, we will go to some Q and A and whatnot. Um. I'd just like to take a moment to thank all of you that have that have been with us, that are still here now. Um, we have a little parting gift. Um, and so the next person that we call their name and they're here is gonna get a 20% discount off of anything that they purchase. We're thanking so, you for staying to the end. Absolutely, absolutely. So, all right, I'm going to shake and Carrie's going to draw. And we'll see if you're here. Connie, is it Keon? Connie Keon, are you still here? Lonnie. Lonnie. Wait a minute. Lonnie. 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 Okay. No. Because we're going to find somebody. We're going to find, yes. Yeah. Okay. Von, I don't know who that was. Michelle Ernst. Michelle? I am here. Yay. Terrific. Michelle, this is for you. So Michelle, if there's if if there's anything that you want to purchase, all you have to do is just call me and let me know what that is, and I will give you your 20% discount. And thanks for staying with us. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, Laura. So I I I I think we've done, I think we've done enough. <laughs> I think it's a lot to absorb. We have, exactly. It's just, if anyone has questions. Yep. Mm -hmm. I do actually have a, a question because um, with the corrugated rib jacket, mm -hmm. I am in Louisiana. So thinking of something that would be more year round, would it work in the, one of the linens? It, it actually won't. And the, okay. and the reason the reason for that is that um, linen doesn't have any of that resiliency that I was talking about. Okay. So it's extremely difficult to knit it tightly enough to make it curl. 
and okay. that jacket is totally dependent on the curl. Okay. You might consider the vest. Yeah, the vest is nice. Mm -hmm. I've made the vest and it's really nice. Yeah. I'm gonna have to think. <laughs> well, you obviously, like like me in Florida, would not get year 